each vertebra consists of a vertebral body and arch. The arch is composed of two pedicles, two transverse processes, four articular processes, two superior and two inferior, and a spinous process. In the lumbar region, the anatomical processes of the vertebrae vary in shape and will therefore condition different sonographic acoustic shadows. The laminae are broad, short, and strong. The spinous process is thick and extends posteriorly and horizontally. The superior and inferior articular processes are well defined, projecting respectively upward and downward from the junctions of pedicles and laminae. The articular processes spring from the junctions of the pedicles and laminae. There are two right and left, and two superior and inferior. These structures, also known as sig apophysis, link each vertebra with the adjacent one and provide stability to the spine. The facet joints are pairs of small joints located in between the vertebrae. These joints have opposite surfaces of cartilage which limit the friction between bones. The joint is surrounded by a capsule that contains a small amount of synovial fluid which acts as an additional lubricant, reducing friction between the vertebrae. The facet joints can be visualized using ultrasound in both sagittal and axial planes. However, due to the sagittal orientation of the structures in the lumbar region, the axial plane will provide the best sonographic view. Healthy facet joints support the spine whilst also allowing a wide range of twisting and bending. These joints may become inflamed and painful due to a variety of conditions. Lumbar Sun Anatomy Due to the depth of the neuroaxial structures, a low-frequency curvilinear probe is preferred. This will also allow the exploration of various vertebrae or intervertebral spaces. When exploring the lumbar region facet joints, it is recommended to place the patient in a prone position with a pillow below the abdomen. This will flex the lumbosacral spine. Sagittal view. In this view, the long axis of the probe is placed in the sagittal plane lateral to midline and different views may be obtained depending on the position of the probe. We can recognize the different components of each vertebra, including laminae, facet joints, transverse processes, axial view. In the axial view, we should be able to identify two different patterns along the lumbar spine. Placing the probe directly above the spinous process, we can visualize it as a hyperechoic structure with lamina on either side. In this view, and due to the hyperechogenicity of the bone, the structures beneath the spinous process are not visualized. Moving the probe slightly cephalato-coded, the interspinous ligament is then visualized. Because the echogenicity of this ligament is less than the spinous process, other neuroaxial components will be visible. Scanning at this level will reveal the facet joints and the transverse processes on either side of the midline as hyperechoic structures. In a dynamic exploration, Displacing the probe from coda to cranial, both patterns previously described will repeat.
first step. Facet joints can be visualized in a paramedian sagittal exploration as wavy white structures with humps, typically described as the camel hump sign. Second step. After a physical examination, we proceed to localize the most painful point over the lumbar region corresponding to the facet joint that is affected. In this illustration, we have selected L4, L5 into vertebral space. It is advisable to use a skin marking pen to identify the affected joint. The probe is then turned from a sagittal to a transverse plane over the affected joint until we recognize the upper surface of the lumbar area and the acoustic gap, visualizing both the anterior and posterior complexes. At this point, and whilst performing certain movements of the probe, we will observe an acoustic gap between the superior and inferior articular processes, and this will correspond with the facet joint. The approach. A facet joint block or injection is a minimally invasive procedure in which a physician injects a small amount of local anesthetic or medication to provide pain relief. Although the injection can be performed in a sagittal view, the recommended approach is placing the probe in an axial view, and this will allow the identification of the small articular gap that corresponds to the facet joint. The needle will be advanced in plane, from lateral to medial, progressing until the bone structures of the joint are contacted. It is recommended an injection of 2 to 5 milliliter containing a pain relief solution.